What's really good? It's your boy, Hader Ali, with the one and only, my mentor, Coach G-Dub in the building. What's going on, Coach? How are you doing, my man? Everything's going good down here in training camp. We're uh, three and a half weeks into it. Got another eight or nine days to go, and uh, the final cut down will be on the 23rd of March. And then the very next weekend, uh, the 30th and the 31st, uh, we open up the season, and we open up the season on, on the 31st at San Antonio. We'll be back in Washington the very next week. And I'm seeing the clips, man. You're giving the offense a hard time now. You got listen, you yeah. can't you can't just do that all of a sudden, right? Yeah. But hey, that's the only way they're gonna learn, right? That's, that's it. And you know what? They they love practicing it against us, the coaches and the players, because they're gonna see more and have to play harder and practice harder than any other team for the entire season is gonna do against them. And we may do that in just one practice. And uh, it's been very competitive, and we're, we're keeping everybody as healthy as possible. And uh, that coaching staff did a lot last year on what they can do, our coaching, our offensive staff on, especially in the run game and uh, in, the, the, in the RPO quick game, did a lot of really good things, and they challenge us every day also. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, not a lot of people know, but um, we are ready for the season start for you guys. I'm going to hope the best for you guys. Coach, a lot of stuff is going on. <laughs> Sam Howell is gone. He's gone. And now I'm thinking about the Mariota free agency pickup. We're going to save that for later. But now I'm I'm thinking about something now. But Sam Howell is gone. He got traded to the you know, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, received a third-round pick and a fifth-round pick. I guess it's not bad for a guy who wasn't fully trained yet in the system. But here we go. We are going to grade the free agency picks. And before I begin, a lot of fans and people are asking me, is Coach G-Dub part of FFL? I'm going to have you answer that question. Part of the FFL as much as I can to help do everything, which is a fantastic thing for the fans, especially there in D.C., so this is a really fun thing we're doing, and I'm glad we're we're doing this. And you know, I've diagnosed everything that's going on in the in the NFL all last year on my show, the Come Get Some show. And then um, you know, we'll see. You know, and again, people are taking a look at uh, my son and I maybe doing the Thursday night games as a simulcast, like Peyton's are doing, the Peyton brothers are doing on ESPN. So it's fun, and you do a great job with this show. And it's great for the fans. It's about the fans. And we've got to make sure they're all in on it. Definitely. You're definitely right, Coach. I appreciate the, all the good feedback you always give. Comment on the trade you just talked about. Mm -hmm. And just from all of my years of being in the league is that uh, there's something up. There's something cooking. And they're not done yet. If they're mm -hmm. collecting draft picks and they brought Marcus Mariota on, okay, to be able to handle a young quarterback that they've looked at to be able to have enough picks to trade up into the first round to get one of the top guys that way. And then with having a veteran in the building that's done this before at other places, it gives that time, that young man time to grow and learn in the system, but more importantly, how fast things are in the national football league. And that's the biggest adjustment for any player, but especially a quarterback in the national football league is adjusting to the speed of the game. Definitely. No, I totally agree on that. And we're going to touch on Mariota. But um, Zach Ertz coming in, uh, you're getting a one-year deal for $5 million. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, Coach. You know, they say when the adult cry, what's the baby going to do? They ain't well, going to do say nothing. This, as soon as you told me it was $5 million, I'm wondering if he's uh, was doing something also at the Philly basketball team. And uh, I know the owner – you know, and, and what he's doing there and, and those teams there too. But Zach's a really good player and has had a really good career. But the biggest part of that is, is paying somebody that much money that can't stay healthy. And he's going to have to do a phenomenal job on staying healthy. And whether that's load management, rep management or whatever, to be able to productively earn that money that amount right. you know, on a one-year deal. But I have a lot of respect for him as a player when he's healthy. But obviously, the two A's, the two words for a professional athlete that they have. Tom, coach. 
the two, the two words that they have to own are accountability and availability. I don't That's need it. any new coaches. We need players, and you got to be on the field. Definitely. I definitely see the same. He's 33 years old, Coach. I mean, you know, when, when that pick happened, I'm like, oh, Lord, don't tell me, you know, the commanders are doing the same old thing again, getting, you know, players who are in their, you know, the, you know, Zach Ertz is supposed to be cashing his 401k plan by now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you this. I'll give it a D. Okay, I'll give it a solid D, Coach. What do you think about that? I'll stay with you in the same spot. Solid D. Definitely. Next up, you know, we signed defensive end Durance Armstrong for a three-year deal worth up to $45 million. He's 6'4", you know, 26-year-old. You know, he got 23 sacks since 2018. So, you know, look, we need some depth in the DE position. So, you know, taking this, uh, you know, not bad, not too shabby. Obviously, it's going to be a playing game, and, and they're going to find out who's going to be the starter. But, hey, the more people they bring in, the more the training they're going to do, they're going to find the right one. And I'll give it a C-. minus. All right. So now, because that is taking place, here's the first thoughts that came to my head. Dan Quinn connection or Adam Peters connection. They, they have done a lot of work on him. They know him inside now. Dan Quinn is going to, after they have, they knock the run down, they're going to have to do a better job against the run, but he is going to be turning those defensive linemen loose to rush the passer. So this is a potential younger quality pass rusher that can play in a situational format for Dan Quinn. So I'd give it a B minus, and uh, he's shown that he can get after the quarterback, but he's going to have to play in more situations than just passing. Definitely, definitely. Now, third one, we sign in center, Tyler Biades, also from the Cowboys on a three-year deal worth up to $30 million. He got one Pro Bowl in his uh, you know career, and also he has seven holding calls in a four-year span. Wow, that's not bad now that's for really a whole lot. That's really good. And listen, like I was saying, when the adults crying, what the baby going to do? Well, we've been crying all this long that we need an old lineman after Chase, you, you know, rule year. He had to retire early because he's like, you know what? I don't see this team going nowhere, so I might as well cash out already. But this guy coming in, I'm giving it an A because that's what we needed. I agree with you. I'm going to give it an A, too. And listen, a practice day in day out evaluation with dan quinn going against him every single day in practice in the competitive periods he has a very good and strong knowledge about him i think it's solid they desperately need to improve that offensive line and this is a good good one to start with at the center position because he's got to be the quarterback of the of the offensive line he's doing all the uh, checks and changes and point outs and, and the communications with his five or four brothers up front when the quarterback's doing a lot of other things in the checks. And uh, he's been able to do that at the Cowboys. And I think that that's a good, good deal. Definitely. And now here we go. <laughs> Yo boy. Okay. The guy that you coach with the New York Jets linebacker, Frankie Louvu. On the three-year deal, thirty-six million. And listen, if you coach them, you damn well know the PFF score is going to be high. You got an eighty grade, hard to see, six foot three, undrafted. Okay, twenty sacks, five forced fumbles. You got one touchdown. I'm giving you a solid B because, man, how long, coach? We've we been crying for tall linebackers. We're all lengthy for a long time in Washington. We finally got that type of guy, and you coached him. And I know you have better background on him go ahead and he fits perfectly into what dan quinn does with the backer position okay on what he does on defense i'm so proud of frankie because i had to really put my foot down and stomp all over the place to get him opportunity at the jets and he's released and he's brought back and he's released and then he missed some valuable time on getting more defensive snaps but was a tremendously very good special teams player along with his growth in the defensive snaps. I am so happy for him and the contract. Okay, I'm going to give him a B plus, and I think he's still only scratching the surface on what he can do as a defensive football player and as a teammate. And listen to me, 
when the D.C. defenders come to town to play in the home games and Frankie's there in the offseason, I'm bringing him to the hotel to have him speak to our team and then have him do the fired up speech I used to always have to do with him on haka, 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 all the stuff that he would do, okay, you know, his background yes. and, uh, also, definitely. and everything and have him right. fire the guys up before they go to bed one night. Amazing addition to the team. And, and when I saw that, I was like, okay, you know, Adam Peters is really cooking. He's really cooking. He and this is this looks like the right guy driving the truck finally. Yeah. Finally. And now the fifth uh, you know, guy we signed is uh, you know, Austin Eckler for a two year deal worth eleven point forty three million. You know, he has around seventy combined touchdowns. He had a down year last year, but listen, with this guy, the thing is the old commanders would have paid 80 70 million for these big name players what i like is now they got a new guy over there with a calculator know what the hell he's doing right because the amount they gave this guy technically like 5.5 a year amazing deal for the price coach i'll give it a c plus what about you i'm gonna give it the same grade as c plus and only because okay he's had a lot of contact and everything and and as a running back position, the, the longevity of the running back position is not as long as it is on other uh, positions. I love the fact that he was an undrafted free agent. I love the fact that he has had to prove himself every day. I love the fact that he's a good leader in the locker room and in the position. And understand this, the number one thing that goes into winning at the highest place in the world in professional sports, the national football league is establishing a culture first. And you have to have the right culture first. And Dan Quinn will do that. And I think Austin's a good hire. No, definitely. I definitely think so. Obviously, you know, you got to earn it to be there. He's been coming in as a third down back, you know, B Rob is more of a punisher back and should be up there. Let's see how that goes. Now, you know, we always have this thing, you know, where we get kickers in here and there and they come in, they try to prove themselves. And, you know, we always have that. You know, every year for every team, there's something, right? Now, yep. this guy coming in, Mr. Brandon McManus, you know, coming in a one-year deal worth $3.6 million. I mean, whenever I see this guy's games, man, he's making 61, you know, 60-plus yard field goals. But the goal, the field goal he needs to make, he misses. And I'm like, oh, Lord, is it all over again? But listen, you never know, you know. He, he has a Super Bowl ring in his under his belt, and he has an eighty-one point three field goal percentage, which is not that bad. So, you know, I give it a C plus. I, I at least think it's a better upgrade than Sly. I think it's a solid hire, especially at the value that they got that at. I do think he has experience, but I also would like to show people now and say this: you know, mental health and confidence and everything at the highest level of the world, okay having a really good person that helps players in that area is also a very, very significant hire in the programs and stuff. Brandon has been all over. He's been a lot of places and uh, he gets on a swing. He's got to be able to block out any self-talk that's negative in his head and he has leg strength and uh, he's had success. And I think it's a good hire at this point in time right now, especially where Adam got him, Peters got him at the value of one-year contract. I think that uh, that shows everybody it's a prove-yourself position uh, because it's only one year. I give him the same grade you did. Seventh guy signing guard Nick Algretti on a three-year deal for $16 million. Three-time Super Bowl champ, seventh-round pick. And not only that, man, he played with a torn UCL in the AFC and the Super Bowl matchup. Speaking about O line, we got another one, and not just another one. We got a guy who's gonna come in, play. Doesn't matter if he, you know, his back hurt, his head hurt, his neck hurt. He's gonna come in and perform. And I give it an A plus because this is the type of guy we always needed. We need to build the O line. Sam being gone now, A. The first person quarterback coming in, he needs that foundation to be set for his career to shine. I will say this. This young man has earned my respect a long time ago. And what I just talked about culture, this is who you establish that kind of a culture with. 
He is a tough guy. He is a smart guy. He is a very, very technique sound guy. The number one thing will be the ability to rehab, load manage, get back from that torn UCL and get everything ready to roll. But he's the kind of guy you want to go into a fist fight in a phone booth with because he is a tough individual and will be able to continue on and grow that offensive line in the right way. When the coach isn't around, you need somebody else supporting how we're going to go about, okay, gaining yardage on every blade of grass, okay? Every blade of grass, you have to understand that, and this young man knows it. I'd give him an A-plus also. I think that's a good grade for this guy right here. Now, this guy is going to be interesting. We're signing a defensive and another one, Clean Pharrell, to a one-year deal, okay, for $3.75 million. It was amazing in Clemson, round one, pick four. People were saying it was a reach. He's a VA kid, and, you know, he has 13 sacks since 2019. Another guy coming in to prove himself, you know, and I'd give it a C plus, and, you know, but, you know, people were saying, okay, that this guy was ahead of Chase Young in the depth chart before he came here. So could be something. Could be something, and I think your grade is good. And I had in my mind a C plus, B minus, and I think he fits into what, Dan Quinn wants done. He needs to stay healthy, but he understands how to knock the line of scrimmage back. He understands, okay, how to rush the passer. And uh, I think it's a solid, solid find, especially at the value that Adam Peters got him at. Okay, I agree. Now, this is going to be, you know, kind of itchy, but we're going to see. We're signing quarterback Marcus Mariota to a one year deal worth. Up to six million dollars could go up to ten. I mean, listen, he's a Heisman Trophy and all that, and the first pick, you know, first round, second pick. But this guy is getting almost six million by laying eggs on the sideline. I mean, look, listen. But the problem is now I see what's going on here. Okay, Sam is traded. Possibly. The guy who has the same kind of playing style, Jane Daniels, could possibly be the second pick now. That's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. I don't mm -hmm. think it's May. I don't think it's that because they don't have the mm -hmm. playing style as Mariota. Jaden Daniels does. So I see this could be a possibility. But don't give the guy a damn six million dollars. You give him at least give him some chump change, you know? Some put a smile on his face. Give him three million. I just think it was a little overpaid, but it is what it is. I give it a D grade. I can't uh, disagree with you on, on the pay part of it, but it also tells me a little bit about from an intelligence factor is that especially people that have been in the game, okay, for longer than a decade, two decades, like Adam and Dan both have been in, you must have a solid backup quarterback as your young quarterback is growing. Otherwise, you are putting him in all kinds of psychological and mental distress if he's not able to play like a C.J. Stroud did this year as a rookie quarterback. Now, Marcus has been through a lot. It also tells me that Cliff Kingsbury has a relationship probably and has an understanding greatly in what Marcus can do. I think he's a very smart. I think he is tough. I think he is a versatile quarterback, especially in the RPO game in the, the ability to scramble and extend the pocket and extend the timing of a play, I think he can do that. And I do know that's part of Cliff Kingsbury's structure of his offense. So I would give it a C right now just because of all the different places he's been around. But I think it's a solid value for at least a year to see which quarterback they're going to go doing. It. And if they don't go up to the first pick, and they take that second pick, just what you were talking about, this is a quality guy to be there. It makes sense if they get Jaden in and having the background and kind of help him out because almost the same playing style. Now, this is a very interesting one. This is another, okay, defensive end signing, Dante Fowler. And this guy, I'm going to tell you, he was an amazing player in Florida, first-round pick, you know, pick three. And he has 45 sacks and 13 forced fumbles and two touchdowns. The thing is, I think this guy might just be ahead of all of them 
after all the training and everything's all done because this guy right here is a very, very sleeper pick. And I think this guy could probably come in with the physicality he has from the tape I've seen and be the sole starter for the team. I give it a B minus. Well, here's what I'll tell you. I've done tons of work on Dante also, so I know a lot about him. I think he fits just like we've talked about into what Dan Quinn wants. Now, early on in his career, he was allergic to being able to play the run. He mm -hmm. was allergic to having to play in a solid position to do that. And that downgraded him in a lot of people's eyes, but he has grown better in those ways. And now in this particular style, which is different to where he was drafted into, he is going to be hunting the quarterback. I think it's a solid get, you know, and I think at, 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 at right now he has to stay healthy and they need to protect him in the run situations that he has been in, but I'd give it a B minus also. Here comes a position that a lot of people don't talk about. They only talk about it when the guy messes up and then you out, you're gone. They call you up at 5 a.m., sir, you got to go. Long snapper position. All right, coach. I know these guys, you know, they, uh, you know, they, you know, you know, drink water, eat some hot dogs and go to sleep. But listen, they get paid while they're doing it. So I'm going to tell you, he's getting a three year deal. OK, uh, don't know how much he's getting quite yet. It's not out yet, but undrafted one Pro Bowl in, in his resume. And he was coached by our current special teams coach, Larry Izzo in Seattle. I'm, I'm going to be honest. You know, I can't – If a, for a guy who eats hot dogs and water and goes to sleep and gets paid, I got to give it an A, Coach. I think you did a good job on that. I'd give it an A, too. He has a, a knowledge with Larry. Larry has knowledge with him. I've looked at him. I've scouted him. Uh, he's very solid in what he does. And now they've changed since I was a special teams coordinator many, many years ago. They've changed all the things protecting the long snapper and not been able to line up over them and, and drive their – you know, their head back so far or, or turn them sideways and all that kind of stuff is he's a good athlete and uh, he's a good snapper. And you need to have one of those kind of guys to be a solid punter and more importantly, be able to spot the ball and be a solid kicker in the kicking game, in the field goal game and extra point game. I think it's a solid hire and I trust Larry to know exactly who he's bringing in there. And uh, I think it was good. Now, this guy is a very interesting guy, low-key guy, uh, signing safety Jeremy Chin to a one-year deal for $5.1 million. Once again, mathematics is perfectly correct, but let me tell you one thing. You know, he, his stats are like, you know, Cameron Curl, but he's a little, he could be possibly cheaper, and obviously he is going to be cheaper than Cameron Curl. He's a more physical player from what I've seen on the tape and – He's 20 more pounds heavier than Cameron Curl yep. and an inch taller. Yep. And, and coach, you know, yep. being a Super Bowl defensive coordinator running coach, every inch matters. We've got to keep it PG, but every inch matters, coach. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This boy coming in, I got to give it a B plus, man, because I think this guy is going to come in and start ball hawking everyone. I think you're solid. I'd give it a B plus two. And I will tell you this in every meeting I'm in, we talk about defending every blade of grass. We're not talking about yard. We're not talking about stripes. We're talking about every blade of grass. That's our grass. That's our ball. We've got to understand this. And this mentality of this safety right here can again, get the culture the right way, the way Dan Quinn wants it early on. And uh, I think you're going to see some rocking and rolling play out of him. And uh, Dan does a good job protecting that position. And it'll be a good – I think it's a good signing. Definitely. I definitely do think it's a good signing. And I think he's going to perform as well, oh, Yes. Uh, uh, you know, in the system. And uh, now this last one, I'm going to tell you, really blindsided the hell out of me because <laughs> I – listen, I was taking a – I was taking a doo-doo, and I'm like, you can't be serious. Because when this happened, I felt like I needed to go again because this was a crazy one. Signing linebacker Bobby Wagner to a one-year deal for $8.5 million. Listen, Coach, like you're talking about, availability is key. 
This guy is heading to his 13 year, 33 years old, six time All Pro, nine Pro Bowls, tackling machine, and only missed one game of his career. Coach, I gotta give it an A, man. Like this thing was people are out there, you know, the little kids out there talking about, oh man, this has been good five years ago. My guy, he only missed one game in his rookie season. Coach, lead it on. All right. Bobby Wagner has my respect. He has earned my respect and trust. And if Dan Quinn is being looked upon as being ignorant for this hire, then Greg Williams, Dr. Heat, when he was at the Redskins those years, and he brought little bitty short London Fletcher in, for 17 straight years, he never missed a game. He should be in the Hall of Fame, okay? And we're still pushing for that. Bobby Wagner is exactly, his middle name is Culture. And Dan Quinn has another voice in the meeting rooms, in the locker rooms, on the airplane, on the practice field, and on the game field in the heat of battle that's going to say and do the right things. I thought this was a home run getting him convinced to come there. And uh, I'm, I can't wait to watch him play in the Dan Quinn system of defense again. Definitely, definitely, Coach. And I would assume that would be a great A for you, too. It's a great A. Now, Coach, that's so far all the signings we have on free agency. Um, we got to give Adam Peters a grade because uh, the last 20 years, you know, you know, truck was going in the ocean, but now the truck is going on the road this time. And I got to be honest with you, being a second gen fan, I would give it a solid, solid A minus. And I got to add the minus in there because, listen, you got to keep the expectations low because these are great signings, coach. But I remember, it's all about translation to the field and the white grass. Right. So yep. we have to see how it translates. So that's why I got the A minus out there, coach. What about you? I say this. I said this when they hired him. I thought and I'd done a ton of research on him and I grade all those people because being a head coach, being a general manager or being a quality owner, whoever that is, the number one thing you have to do is be able to hire the right people to do their job that you're not babysitting. And Adam is one of those guys. He's put his time and work in at all levels of that area of that department that he's a general manager in. I would give him a solid A minus also. I think that's great because you're not done. It's not done. And if you think that's done, then all of a sudden now we're in the office blaming other people because, hey, this guy can't stay healthy. This guy can't do this. This guy can't do that. We got to continue. And this draft is very important because as you get a chance to, in the very first time you meet somebody, as the conditioning program, the veterans come back and they're going to be getting involved before the draft. And then the draft, here comes those guys into the mini camps, okay, into the OTAs. How you start this season is how you take every day of practice in this offseason and every meeting in this offseason evaluating your team and what the need is. I think he's hit a home run. I think, uh, let's just say, I think he's hit a triple, okay? He's hit a triple, and uh, I think it's still more things to come, and I think the relationship that he and Dan both have together is important for the success for the Washington Commanders to take the next step. Coach, I totally agree with you. You know, Good minds always think alike, and we're both on the same page. And, you know, so far, guys, everyone out there, this is our grading for our commander's free agency pick so far. Uh, me and Code G-Dub are going to be back next week. We're going to be talking a different subject, uh, a team that Coach G-Dub also coached, Los Angeles Rams. So there we go. So it's going to be a special guest on next week. It's going to be a good topic to talk about. Everyone out there, have fun. Keep your eyes peeled because, you know, a lot of stuff is happening because Adam Peters is cooking out there. All right, guys, take care. G-Dub, you want to make exit out? Hear, hey, take care, and we're going to break it like I always do. Ready, break. Come get, Come get some. some.